Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you all how to make an ear cuff that wraps around the back side of the ear for having like hangy drapey things hanging from it. We're going to focus primarily on the frame structure and then uh, talk about some different variations that you can add to that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using our 16 gauge pair of wire. This is American wire gauge. It is quite stout. Let me actually see. I think I have, no, I think it's 1.2 mil. That's, that can't be correct. Um, <laughs> don't quote me on that. I lost my little paper that says how many millimeters the 16 gauge American wire gauge is. Um, but we'll figure that out. Um, I'll try to have it down in the video description. And I am going to pull off 12 inches. I have a little ruler etched into the edge of my work surface. I just used like a file and whoop, ground it down at the inch mark incrementally. Okay, so there's one length. And you're going to want to have this pretty work hardened. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend if... You, it lower than a 16 gauge you could definitely go thicker but if you go lower than a 16 gauge like an 18 or even a 20 gauge I would recommend doubling up on the wire and possibly weaving it together but that'll be for a future tutorial um, if you guys are interested in that so we have our two sections at 12 inches each and you'll definitely need wire snips as well as mandrel pliers I really recommend. If you don't have mandrel pliers, nylon jaw pliers would work. And a block and a hammer is could be uh, used definitely, but not required. Again, that's why we're using this thicker wire. So I'm just going to zoom in. And we're going to start by building the part that goes around this back section right here on the ear. And this is what all of the drapey bits will be hanging from. So we're going to start by making a spiral. You don't, well, you could do a spiral or you could just do a loop. So let's go ahead and do a loop because either way, that's how your spiral would likely be starting. I'm going to snip and make sure that we have a nice flat end right there. And let's see if zooming in super far might be useful. So we're going to use the smallest tip on our mandrel pliers to just shape around that wire and I grab and then turn. So there's that, but you can see it's not perfectly flat. So I'm going to come in, you could use chain nose or flat nose. I like my bent nose pliers just because they're my favorite. And I'm just going to smush that down to get everything to line up nice. If it's still not lining up, you can kind of smush it a bit. And from here, I'm going to continue. I want to zoom out just a bit more because I don't want to keep wandering out of frame. <clears throat> so I'm going to come and hold my pliers a quarter of an inch from where the edge, like I want there to be a quarter inch between this loop and that loop. If you want a wider space, just kind of measure that. And whatever this spacing is, remember it because that's what's going to help you to be consistent. You could also use a thingamajig um, to put pegs in and have them be, be equally spaced. But um, I wanted to do this with as few tools as possible. Sorry, I went out of frame to kind of navigate around all the stuff on my desk. Um, and we are just going to start making an inline loop like that. And then however you flip the wire, just make sure whichever side you're building the loop on is consistent. So you can see this one, the loop wraps around and builds on the bottom side before coming around. So we'll want to maintain that. So move that out of the way. Now, I really like using ParaWire's enameled copper core wire for this because you don't have to worry about it turning you or your client's skin green. You don't have to worry about it tarnishing. Very hypoallergenic, very low maintenance, very easy to work with. So, uh, 
This is not sponsored, I just really enjoy their products and use them in all of my work. And if somebody had recommended Parawire to me sooner, whenever I was learning how to wire wrap, it would have saved me a lot of time and trouble uh, just wrestling with uh, lower quality wire. You know, that was either too stiff or flaked or discolored or what have you. So again, I'm going to come up a little bit more. I tend to do just five loops. Um, just because you're putting a loop on the design doesn't mean you have to use it. Um, it's actually kind of great to make these and attach the chains that I'll be showing you here in a little bit. And then doing custom ear wraps. Um, like if you vent, oh, see right there, I did... I did a whoopsie and it's not a huge deal um it's just whatever it is that I'm doing I tend to like to be cons I tend to like consistency in what I'm doing and so this is a good example though to be able to show just an alternative so how these kind of stair stepped and now this one's stair stepping the other way yeah and we may just keep stair stepping it back up the other way and then do the other side like this and so nobody would even know the difference that it wasn't on purpose so just forcing around forcing the wire around I want to make sure that I'm not squeezing with my mandrel pliers so hard that it's biting through the wire so and if I were to hammer this I would use the nylon head side of a hammer because I don't want right here where the wires are crossing if you hit that with a chasing hammer or ball peen hammer or something it's actually going to start pinching the wire at that cross point and if you do it enough it makes it very thin and easy to break so um, as opposed to using a hammer you may want to just come in and smush with your nylon gel pliers this compression from the pliers can be hard on your hand, um, but it really helps, I think, solid up your wire. So work harden it a little bit. And so here you can see that would kind of hang around and it's just straight right now. That wasn't even in frame, but I don't really need anything past on the back of the ear where it starts curving up and around. And what I use for that curve is actually just a little, this is a inch and a half diameter, um, just bead organizer. And I'm curving towards the side, like I want the non-loop side facing in. And we will just shape this around like that. And now you can see how this would come and just rest right behind the ear. And so you could leave that quite long. You could bring this up and around. I'm actually going to do a little bit more shaping. And we may end up using a much thinner, but I don't have like a pill bottle or a mandrel or just whatever you have we can come in even just using the very thickest end of a ring mandrel now that's going to make it a little too small to be able to fit comfortably onto most human ears but you can open it back up just a little bit and then it comes because these tend to get held on by their own pressure and then I typically do custom sizing on whoever purchases them in our booth. But if you purchased from us in a boot in our booth, but it was a gift for a friend, or if you're making one of your own, or if you bought it off of our website, um, I, I want I did want to show you guys how we do the sizing for that. So from here. I tend to like having the spiral come forward, but you can also have it spiral and come and rest around inside the ear um, with the cartilage and stuff, but I'm just going to do the spiral off to the side, and uh, that gives you a secondary point that you can hang another charm, because however you have hanging here from this back line, you can have hanging there on the front as well. So before we do any kind of cutting or anything though on the wire, I want like uh, trimming it, I want to go ahead and make exactly the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to do this 
quite zoomed out. That way, hopefully, you get the... Uh, I'm less likely to wander out of frame. Uh, <laughs> so, that's why we demonstrated twice. Give that a snip. Let it ping across the room. And then we are going to grab here and just wrapping around. And you could use round nose pliers. If you don't have mandrel pliers, you may be able to see here. I actually, uh, same way as what I did on the table for the one inch marks, I used a file and just cut into the nose of my pliers a tiny little bit to leave like a little mark. And that's my what I think is my favorite size for shaping loops typically. And that just gives me a little point of reference that I can, if I'm making loops, make them all the same size. But I, I still really like my mandrel pliers. And I'm going to line these up. And then I'm going to come around. And then I'm going to line these up. And then I'm going to press around. And I'm just, little at a time, turning the pliers. Just each time I'm doing anything, I just try to make sure that I am... Um, not moving my pliers around a whole bunch. And you can see, just eyeballing it, that lines up pretty okay. It's a little off, but I can deal. And now we're going to start building it back up the other way. So I'm going to flip it over. And what I mean by build it back up the other way is we have that stair step down. Now we'll do the stair step back up again so long as they match it looks intentional and that way I'm not having to take my uh, undo my wire because um especially on the 16 gauge after we've smushed it a bit uh, it, it doesn't like to get rewrapped with the way that some wires like 18 gauge is a lot more accommodating of straightening back out and rewrapping with than I've found 16 gauge to be and just bringing that around. One, two, three. That's our fifth loop. Very cool. And now I am still going to shape with this um, bead organizer initially. There we go. And you can see that's still just like massively different. And then we'll come in. I have a little bead, like a little pill bottle style bead organizer somewhere that's like a little bit bigger than this mandrel and it's the perfect size for this but I have no idea where it is <clears throat> so we'll just bring that down and now we can open it back up to to where they both match more or less in shape and again, we could finish this with a, sp I think I am going to finish it with a spiral. You could just do another loop exactly like down here at the bottom, but, um, I really like the spiral. So I'm going to trim both of my wires right in line with right here. And always save all that scrap wire because you could make a little spiral charm to hang from your ear wrap. Okay, so for this I am going to be using my round nose pliers and I'm going to make whoop, just as small of a loop as I can, as close to the tip of the wire and as close to the, to the tip of the pliers as I can. Just bringing that around and then repositioning my pliers. I'm going to like turning a key in a lock bring this up and around until we get to right there where the nose of my pliers start to get in the way. I'm going to remove and now from here we will use our nylon jaw to hold and I'm going to start having that spiral meet up with the other wire and be positioned a little more snug like that. So it starts nice and open and airy and then becomes tight. And that way, um, hopefully, if you have long hair, it won't get as tangled in your ear wrap. And now you can see 
that will just settle on down around and then a lot of the times if you want it to be tighter you just bring this spiral closer to there and it'll just hold on to your ear like that and we could have added a little loop to hang a charm from we could put a jump ring through it and have a charm hang we could open this spiral up just enough there at the bottom that we could put a jump ring through and have a chain hang. So there's one. Let's go ahead and try to make the other to match. Now you can hang anything off of here. You could use a little bit of beading wire and crimp beads and feathers to hang, um, hang down from the wire frame that we've just made. I really like using like these little guys right here, just attached or you could use a little bit of chain, like this is some 22 gauge platinum toned enameled iron from the ringlord.com. And you could just use some jump rings and stuff to attach. However long and dangly you want to make this, you can do that. I actually think it looks really cool to just attach just chain. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do. Um, again, just to get that same look in case you want to make exactly what I'm making. But um, getting mixed, I think we I got this from Michaels and it's just some little like steampunky gears and charms and watch piece components. And you could have that and just hang that, each of these chains or each of these charms off of a little chain and have it just hanging down behind your ear. And that would look really cute. So you can, if you want this more natural woodland, uh, you could make some little polymer clay leaves. Um, you could make little glow-in-the-dark resin crystals. You could use actual real crystals. It's The possibilities are endless, and you can theme it however you want. You could do pieces of the Triforce um, <laughs> for if you want video games, Yoshi eggs, uh, and like the little Mario stars. Like I mean, really, whatever you're into, find charms of that and hang it off your ear and boom, you got some earrings. <laughs> like, um, some Tardises would be really cool. And again, just making them, anytime I make a pair, I just try to line them up side by side as much as possible to get them to be matching. Very cool. I think I'm going to open this one up just a bit. Boop that way. Because really what's behind your ear is not going to be seen. So it's most important, I think, for the spirals to be quite symmetrical. Um, because those would be, I mean, they're still going to be on either side of your head unless your ears are like literally like this one. But, and if they are, you can go like that and bend it a bit so that it's accommodating to your, your unique ear shape. Um, but very rarely does somebody see both sides of your head at the exact same time. So... Uh, if you are a stickler for perfection, I am going to ask that you cut yourself a little bit of a break and, uh, just focus on having fun with creating your art and perfection or, or at least improvement will come with practice. So to do just the chain, what I'm going to do is cut 10 equal, equal lengths because we have five loops on each of just two inches of chain. And again, I'm gonna scooch the camera so you can see what I'm doing, maybe. I have to scooch the whole camera setup, there we go. But I'm just gonna measure out two inches. So right there, I'm going to just come in with my wire snips and you can let it hang to let them drape naturally next to each other. I'm going to give that a snip and then I'm going to come into here and find the next mark. Oops, well, I thought I'd snipped it. Did I not? Oh, bother. There we go. Sometimes if I snip it too close to where the cut actually was, like the uh, closure on the ring, then it doesn't make enough space for... Okay, it would have been one of these. 
Well, I'm just gonna get in there and we're in the heckins. So I don't want to be just snipping willy-nilly. There it is. Yeah, you can see I had snipped. Let's zoom in. I had snipped super close to the closure of the ring. So sometimes that happens. They'll just snip again. And now we have... Oh, well, I threw that out on the ground, too. But yeah, so it's not all perfectly simple and easy. Sometimes any little detail that can get complicated will get complicated, but that's okay. Just retrace your steps, see where things went sideways, pick up the pieces and carry on from there. So there's two. And so again, I'm going to grab with my wire snips, let it hang snip. There's three. And I'm doing this in real time with you guys just because I think, you know, sometimes weird stuff happens and you never know when something weird is going to happen that might be helpful to y'all. My heart is always with the beginners. <laughs> and we've gotten comments where people are like, this is too chatty, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, you clicked on my face. But just because something that I'm saying isn't necessarily helpful to you, it may have been helpful to someone and so I'm going to keep doing me, chatting it up, and trying my best to anything that comes to mind. Because uh, we don't have like a production crew or somebody who scripts this stuff or edits it. It's all just like I've, I've got my Randy who helps me, you know, with our booth and with almost all aspects of our business. But he doesn't like being on camera and he doesn't like video editing. And so our video production is purely on me and I'm doing my best, y'all. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight. And nine and ten. See, that's how it usually goes. Just nice and smooth. Um, so I'm going to be, for the jump rings, I'm going to be using our American Chainmail Kit. Um, at the time of recording, this isn't available on Amazon right at the moment, but I'm still going to have it linked just because I'm hoping that American Chain Mill gets them restocked on Amazon. If not, we do have a secondary link to another kit that's bigger, but costs like four times as much, but I think would totally be worth it. Um, but I really do, this this one's my favorite. If you're just getting into making jewelry and you don't know if you, because even if, even if you don't want to make chain mail, just having this broad selection, there's some of them I need to reorder, um, having this broad sele selection of jump rings with the sizes, like the corresponding size chart helps you to know, oh, how did that even happen? <laughs> helps you to, oh, okay, I guess it was designed to come out like that. Well, that's weird. Um, just having all of these different jump rings to choose from that even the dinkiest of them is more stout than jump rings that I've gotten from like Joann's and stuff that are like jewelry making jump rings and it's like this one's pretty dinky I wouldn't use that for just a jump ring though I would make chainmail out of it where it's a bunch of jump rings together but the size that I'm using is going to be our 20 gauge 1 8 inch and you could use any small ring that you have. I prefer to use stainless steel for this size if I'm making like a bracelet or something, but these are not load bearing at all. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it. And all tools and materials are linked down in the video description below. So um, if you're interested in shopping, that's a great way of supporting the channel at no additional cost to you because a lot of those links are affiliate links. Not all of them though, but just as many as we can. Um, and yeah, and it's also just a really good sh starting point if you want to see exactly what kind of uh, wire it is, but you want to get it in sterling silver, it's still, you know, that, that information is there for you. So I'm opening a jump ring, hooking our chain onto it, and then I'm going to be hooking that to our wire frame. 
So there's one chain. And if you like the look of this fringe, but you want it to be more dense, you could just make the loops of your ear frame closer together. Um, like not nearly quite so much space in between them. I personally really like the spaced out look and find that it's mo most um, multifunctional for like if you wanted to be hanging feathers or charms or something as well. So to open the ring, we're just taking it like this and bringing it open. I bring the right side towards me, um, not just because I'm right hand. Oh, yeah, pretty much because I'm right handed and I like to be able to see where I'm inserting this uh, opened side through. If I were left handed, I would open this way and hook through because again, you want to be able to see where your ring is going. Just hooking it through the end of the chain, hooking it through, and then to close, I am just wiggling the ends and bringing them together. To try to make it just as seamless as possible. So there we are with our little chains just hanging down. And this one is very minimal, but I just love the way that cha draped chains looks. It's beautiful. And then using this exact same concept, you could be adding teardrop beads or beads on like a decorative head pin or charms or, you know, anything from the ends to give it kind of a... Um, you know, theme it up a little bit. Like, oh, wing charms would be super cute or feather charms. Um, again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big sucker for uh, steampunk stuff. And there we are. And you can kind of see how whenever it's vertical, the chains drape very, very close to each other. And I think it would look just really neat for somebody with short hair or if they have their hair up to where it shows the neck and like the way that the chains drape. That's just super cool to me. <laughs> like, I love that. And then you could hang a charm. And again, if we used stainless steel instead of the aluminum, I'd feel a little bit more solid about um, using these rings, but good thing we're hooking through there and we're knocking stuff over, hooking through the charm. We can always just double up on the ring if the loop on the char on the charm is accommodating enough. So if you typically it. I try to just use a really stout jump ring, but if you're limited in your supply options, or maybe you purchased some jump rings and didn't realize how thin they'd be, um, doubling up on them is a great way to get a nice look and you have much more stout jewelry as a result. And so, oh, and we could have made that spiral that the spider's attached to. Um, we could have put a bead on there. We could have um, made it differently shaped like a little bit more angular like a triangle spiral so there is an ear wrap that i think is just kind of cool so let me know what you guys think down in the comments and if you have any requests for other designs that you'd like for us to do tutorials on um, whether it's designs or techniques just let us know down there in the comments and you can also send us emails if you have questions or need help with troubleshooting you can send us an email to back to earth creations at yahoo.com links to everything again are down in the video description um, if you would like to support the creation of more free tutorials uh, you can join Join us over on Patreon or on our Happy Crafter Club where we also do booty boxes. Again, more links down in the video description. And just thank you guys so, so much for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, hey to everybody in the premiere. Um, if you wanted to be here for the premiere but missed it and don't want to miss it next time, be sure to sign up for our free newsletter where you get also get an, a 15% off coupon um, to our shop where we do weekly shop updates. 
Uh, and yeah, and you'll get notifications anywhere from five to 30 minutes before our premieres go live or our live streams begin. And that way you don't have to worry about relying on YouTube for sending out notifications or anything like that. Um, also, if you join our Happy Crafter Club, uh, you get a 20% 20, 20 off discount to everything in our shop. So if you want to get your hands on some wire or some unique cabochons, whether it's beautiful gemstone, like these are just some some projects that I have laying next to me to get to work on. Uh, so we have stuff like that. We have ooh, some of our fused glass cabochons where we're experimenting with decals and stuff as well. So that's the kind of stuff we upload into our shop. And it's like, we'd, we like to thank y'all for your support by giving you as good a deal on that as possible. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much again for being here. And I will see y'all next time. So until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye.